Trump said during the campaign that if Biden wins, the stock market will crash. If he is elected, the stock market will crash, Trump said. Investors widely believe that Biden would, if elected, govern more moderately when in office, raising taxes and regulation while decreasing tensions over immigration, global trade and China. The stock market has no link to reality, anyway. Printing money, creating financial products and driving inflation up. They are playing this nation like little puppets and people think paid slavery is somehow better than what we had 100 years ago. The only thing is that there are more slaves in 21st century than 100 years ago and monetary-based incentive system brought this planet to the point where 62 richest people on this planet have same amount of wealth than bottom 3 billion. Good job in printing money out of thin air and robbing other nations. With Democrats in control of both the House and Senate, and Biden in the White House, will the stock market crash or rally? Investors and stock advisors are still processing the news from the Fed, regarding inflation, and what that potentially means for the US economy. Investors are nervous anticipating the political transition, as it will have a major impact on stock market directions and stock prices. The rumors run Wall Street going up, the news takes it down. Trump always looks at the good side, even on a bad day. Biden has promised to raise taxes if elected, after the election if he wins only a fool would keep money in the game. The results from Georgia are going to have enormous implications for the financial markets. If Democrats win both of the seats that are up for grabs, that will give them control of the Senate, the House of Representatives and the White House. For the first time since the first two years of Barack Obama's presidency, the Democrats would have an opportunity to advance their agenda without compromising with the Republicans, and that is extremely frightening for investors. The Democrats have made it very clear that they intend to raise taxes on big corporations and the ultra-wealthy, and that wouldn't be good for the stock market bubble at all. As I make this video, experts are already warning that we could see a huge stock market decline if both Democratic candidates win. For example, former Trump adviser Steve Moore is warning that the Dow could fall by 1,000 points. Former Trump senior economic adviser Steve Moore argued on Tuesday, the day voters in Georgia head to the polls for the Senate runoff elections, that a Democratic sweep could lead to the Dow Jones industrial average dropping by 1,000 points. Moore says that he came to this conclusion by examining data from the last 60 years. I looked at the evidence of what's happened in the last 60 years or so with respect to the stock market in terms of three different scenarios, one is Republicans control everything in Washington, the second scenario being Democrats control everything in Washington, the third being divided control of power and in general the best scenario for economic growth has been when you have divided power, Moore said. The worst scenario over the last 50 or 60 years is when Democrats have control over all the levers of power so I would think the historical record is pretty clear on this, that a Democrat sweep tonight would be bad for markets, he continued. Oppenheimer's John Stoltzfus is even more pessimistic. He believes that we could see the stock market drop by a total of 6 to 10 percent if both Democrats win. That's according to Oppenheimer chief investment strategist John Stoltzfus, who wrote in a note to clients on Monday that investors may be spooked by the prospect of increased corporate taxes and government spending under the Biden administration with a Democratic majority in the House and the Senate. A Democratic sweep of the two runoff elections in Georgia could cause the U.S. broad equity market to experience a downdraft of anywhere between 6 percent and 10 percent, Stoltzfus wrote. Large corporations were thrilled with President Trump's tax cuts, but Joe Biden has said that he intends to get rid of them. But in order to do that, Joe Biden needs a Senate that is controlled by Democrats, because a Republican-controlled Senate would never go for what he is proposing. Biden has repeatedly said he would roll back President Trump's 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and raise the corporate tax rate to 28 percent from 21 percent, restore the top individual tax rate to 39.6 percent from 37 percent, tax capital gains as ordinary income, cap deductions for high earners, expand the earned income tax credit for workers over the age of 65 and impose the Social Security payroll tax on wages above $400,000. Without a Democratic-controlled Senate, those tax hikes are likely off the table. At this moment, it is not clear who will win, but investors will be watching the results very, very closely. According to officials in Georgia, we should have a pretty good idea of who won by the middle of the day on Wednesday. Depends how close it is, but most likely it'll probably be tomorrow morning. 
It really depends how many absentee ballots, Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger told Fox News Tuesday morning. David Worley, a member of the state election board, told the New York Times that if processing goes smoothly, officials will have a pretty good idea of who won by 1 a.m. Wednesday. With so much on the line, spending on these races has reached levels that we have never witnessed before. The following comes from Zero Hedge. Roughly $404 million was spent on advertising in the Purdue Ossoff race, according to Advertising Analytics, making it the most expensive Senate race ever. Nearly $300 million was spent on advertising in the Loeffler Warnock race, making it the second most expensive Senate race ever, behind only Purdue Ossoff. Can you imagine how much good could have been done if $704 million had actually been spent helping people instead? Sadly, the game of politics has become all about money these days. The candidate that raises the most money wins the vast majority of the time, and my advice for anyone that is planning to run for office is to raise as much money as possible. As for the stock market, the ridiculous bubble that we are witnessing at the moment will inevitably collapse, and it is entirely possible that these election results could be a trigger event. But whether it happens this week, this month, this year or some time later, there is no possible way that stock prices can stay at such absurdly inflated levels. Even if the stock market fell 50%, stocks would still be overvalued based on historical norms. Never before in U.S. history have we been more perfectly primed for a stock market collapse, and it isn't going to take very much to push us over the edge. For the moment, we are watching Georgia, but there will be many more pivotal moments as we continue to roll through the early stages of 2021. As long as we have politicians who continue to spend money we don't have so that we can live beyond our means today, the nightmare won't end. Neither Democrats or Republicans are willing to stand up and force this country to live within its means. The sustainable level of the economy is limited to what earned income alone can support, and that is probably 50% lower than where we are now. All stimulus is just stealing from the future. How much more of our children and grandchildren's future are we willing to steal? It is also widely known and any debt we take on is simply spending our future income today so that we can spend more than we actually have. It also widely known that the debt will have be paid back out of our future income, thus requiring us to live at a level that is below what our earned income can support. It is called austerity, and will have to happen. A historical study 20 developed countries that had become over-indebted showed that all of them had to go through deep austerity before they could move forward. The concept of, borrowing money from ourself, is pure insanity. Debt is debt and it will have to be paid back, defaulted on, inflated away, backdoor default, or monetized. All of these will result in a reduced standard of living in the future. The pain is going to have occur. We can take it now, or dump it on future generations. It is zero-sum game. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.